Hi, David Vizard here, and you guys are watching Paratech 10. This is the channel where we strive to give you real world facts. And I'm going to say this because I need to establish a position here. Do you want information delivered to you by a motoring journalist or a research engineer? A research engineer which has had many race wins, many track records, has worked for big name companies and is telling you the way it really is. No bias, no uh, preconceived ideas, no opinions unless well stated beforehand. I have a saying, my friend Roger Helgerson popularized this quote of mine. I don't have an opinion, I have a dino. And I want you to ask yourself a question. And I'm directing this at all the non-believers and a lot of them are ne'er-do-wells as well. Why would I spend a third of a million dollars in 1985 money on a research shop if I was just going to make a story up? be total stupidity wouldn't it now I used to get very upset with writers who did just make stuff up there was one editor of uh, a circle track magazine that um, did a long rod story and he did the before tests and completely fabricated the after tests and I made a small mention that Circle track wasn't printing reliable results. And this went all over America. Well, it went from the West Coast to the East Coast, believe it or not, in less than four hours. The fact that I happened to say this on the phone to my friend Roger, that the engine in the after state had not been tested. Now, I got blacklisted for bad-mouthing circle track. I must have lost a quarter of a million dollars in magazine fees due to the fact I told the truth. When my friend, who was the publisher then of Hot Rod, Carcraft and uh, circle track and a few others when my friend Leonard Emanuelson found out that this guy was in fact lying about the results he apologized big time but it's too late I've lost a quarter million bucks now I did run into him kind of at West Tech he was in another room and the guys there had to stop me going in and beating the shit out of the guy. Now, that's the kind of people I'm up against. Now, that doesn't mean they're all like that. What it means is that some of these people are in positions of power and abuse it. They are in a position of influence and abuse it. Some of them are just downright liars, like that guy was. But he wasn't the only one. I had more than one story come back and say we can't print this because it's different to what they advertise and the fact of the matter is is once the figures had come out sometimes a year or two later I was right but all the money I spent on doing those articles was lost because of editors having to take flack from advertising managers so my goal is, and I stress this, is if it's a service or a product done well by people who are competent and honest, we promote it. If it's a service or product that is mediocre, we tend to ignore it. Not all the time, but most of the time, 90% of the time. If it's a ripoff, we really expose it. And ripoffs, what comes under the heading of ripoffs is people spreading information that is wrong,
people's companies selling products that flat don't work and the last category trolls because they nearly always interrupt the flow of good technical information by making these straw man ads or throwing insults insults which they are totally ungrounded on these people who've never met me these people who don't know what i do for a living they think they know but they don't but they have an opinion which they note that an opinion they what they do is they use opinions in place of facts usually they're good at throwing insults that's because their brain capacity does not extend to actually making a concrete statement that has some substance to it. This channel is not here to have arguments. It's here to spread knowledge and get debates. I learn things from people who are debaters. I've learned stuff from my commenters. And they're always, not nearly always, they are always people who respond politely as well as intelligently. And I don't want people saying, you're wasting your time, you're never going to convert them. No, but I can make them look like the idiots that they are. And here's the thing. People say, don't let it bother you. It doesn't. I get immense satisfaction from checking a troll off the troll list. Really do. Because they're just, well, trolls are the kind of people that stimulate wars starting. They really do. And um, they have no idea of what is proprietary and what isn't. They just rotate about a little world on their own with ill feelings towards everybody. They're a psychiatric menace. So guys, if you want to argue, if you want to argue with me, don't. If you want to debate, fine. Now, let me tell you about my problem with Eric. Eric is being a very, and this is what I'm going to base all of my rebuff on his stuff. He has not reviewed the article that I uh, put out. And if you look, rewatch his video, and we're going to do that because I'm going to take it apart piece by piece. You will see that almost everything is down to incredulity. That's looking incredible. And opinions opinions based on no real knowledge of what i do and that's what we're going to do i'm going to take down eric's video piece by piece and show that he's a terrible reviewer and, and i mean terrible that's not an exaggeration however i want you to understand that this does not dismiss him from my list of good guys who can port heads excellently so don't let any comments I say have any effect on your view of him as a potential head supplier for your race car. Further on down the road, if I'm still on speaking terms with Eric, I say this and I stress one thing here. Right now it's an opinion based on watching his videos. What I'm going to do down the road if we're still on speaking terms, which I suspect fact we may not be but that will be on him not me i am going to ask him to port a couple of cylinders on a head so that i can do a feature on it and we can establish just how much quality that has now you might say well that's not a very good um, deal i mean he knows more about heads than you well, you might think that, and you just might be right, but more than likely you're wrong. A few days ago, I celebrated my 66th year porting cylinder heads. That's longer than Eric's been alive. And I've been doing it at university level for over 40 years. University level. This means I've been teaching guys who've gone on to be cup car head modifiers. I've Gone, I've taught guys who've gone on to be pro stock head modifiers, etc. Now, you don't have to take my word for this. I have had, I have 
been invited to lecture in universities in virtually every English-speaking country in the world except South Africa, plus most of the countries in Europe. My satisfaction rating is through the roof. In the last 20 years of lecturing at universities, I've had a satisfaction rating from professional engine builders and NASCAR engine builders and NASCAR headquarters, etc. Through all these universities I've done in the States. Now wait for this, 99.9% .9 satisfaction. That's not from idiots who are trolls, who know nothing about anything of any consequence. They can only troll. The reason they troll, and I'm back on this, is because it looks like they've got an opinion that has some value. Well, guys, the statements you make prove that you don't. Prove that you don't. Most trolls condemn themselves, and that's how I take advantage of them to show what idiots they are. So, you potential trolls, I'm gonna have fun with you. Those of you who want a good debate, politely, I'm going to have fun with you, but it will be constructive. That's the difference. Now, let's get on with this. I'm going to do a little part of Eric's video, maybe a minute or two, maybe less than that. Take the subject or comment he's made and then use that comment against him. So I'm going to use only arguments that he makes and show how he is wrong and he's contradicting himself or being incredulous or opinionated. Hey guys, this is Eric Weingarner with Weingarner Racing. Woke up to a, a video today about me, so I thought I'd do a little response. So the video actually comes from, uh, well, Data Void. Uh, that's why I don't have to say his name. Let's stop here. Take a note of that comment, data boy or data boy, whichever you prefer. In a roundabout way, Eric, that's actually a compliment because I'm the guy that delivers from data, solid data, thousands of dyno tests, etc., etc. Right? So thank you for that one. Unfortunately, you couldn't make your mind up whether to mention my name or not. I couldn't quite hear what you said next, but at that moment in time, your intent was not to mention my name. Right after that, you mentioned my name. Did you get the idea? Anyway, here's the basics of it. I'll give a rundown for what you, so you know what I'm talking about, which I hate these back and forth type of videos. Like someone's attacking the other ones. I really don't care. But um, do you like why you're responding? I have no idea, really. Sometimes we all make stupid decisions and all fairness. It probably wasn't the smartest move anyway, but bear with me. All right, so let's back up. Um, I happened to watch a video from David Bizard, and he was saying why the AFR LS3 heads and Forcer heads didn't make power. And the only reason why I watched that, because I don't want you guys thinking that I just stock other ones, I don't. But the only reason why I watched that one in particular was because if you're to my channel, you'll know that I'm getting ready to dyno the AFR LS3 enforcer heads on an engine dyno, not a chassis dyno. Eric's emphasizing the use of an engine dyno here. Now let's view why he thinks, or maybe why he thinks, a chassis dyno is worse. Well, the trouble is, is most chassis dynos have inconsistencies due to operator carelessness. If you take care of things like tire pressure, starting temperatures, etc, etc, then a good chassis dyno can get you the results you want. Bear this in mind, it's not the horsepower at the flywheel that gets you down the drag strip, it's the power at the wheels. Now, here's one of those questions I wanted to ask here. I want you to tell me whether this is a fact or not. The DinoJet Dino prototype was developed in my shop in California. Just to answer, lie, truth. Now on with the show. Versus an 823 LS head 
Promax small bore LS3 head, Promax large bore LS3 head, Pro, uh, Brodix BR3 head. Um, so I'm getting ready to dyno those. So I was curious to hear, I guess, why he thought that it didn't make power. And I'm going to go ahead and save himself, which he probably, if he had actually tested the heads, he'd know this was probably the case. Because in one of the things that had happened whenever I tested the heads, when I tested the heads, I flowed them, obviously. But the thing I did that I haven't seen him do is I checked the spring pressures. And the reason why it was trailing off the end had nothing probably to do with the cam, but more to do with valve float. And I was wanting to see if he would say that, if that was the issue, because when I checked the valve springs, they had 145 pounds on the seat. The BTR kit that the other had on the LS3 heads that it was compared against, those were like a 155, 165. I think it's valve float. Okay, hold on. Let's back up a bit here, because what I'm going to present next is the first damning evidence that Eric does not review material very well. He actually missed the whole point of an entire video, which from his point of view doesn't exist. He's up there. Let's go and take a look at what he's saying. If he had actually tested the heads, he'd know this. If he had actually tested the heads, he'd know this. If he had actually tested the heads, he'd know this. If he had actually tested the heads, he'd know this. If he had actually tested the heads, he'd know this. Eric, let me ask you a simple question. Did you actually watch episode 136? Now I'm trying to rein in the sarcasm here. Obviously not. So you are quoting simple bullshit. No other word for it. Did we actually test it? Compared with your test, we not only did port flow, we did discharge coefficients, mean port velocity, port energy compared before and after, port energy density, and swirl Plus, we molded the ports and showed what they were like. Then, we put the heads on and did a before and after test on the chassis dyno, which revealed very small differences. And then, we went to the drag strip and tested it. And it showed very small differences, reflecting exactly what we dynoed. Did we test it? Eric, I'm afraid to say this is just a typical example of you missing the point. Give up reviewing. You're no good at it. You just don't get your facts straight. Now, I'm going to end this video with one more of those truth or consequences deals. Here's my claim. In 535 hours in my shop in California, we had an engine actually running and being physically tested for 500 continuous hours. Not stop, 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 stop. That was the time it was actually running, taking measurements. 500 hours. We did that in 535 hours total time from engine on the dyno to engine off. True or false? I'd like to see your comments on that. Meanwhile, we'll let you guys go and ponder what I've said here. But the next episode, I'm going to take on the next phase of the video and show that Eric may be a good head porter, but not a good reviewer. Oh, and by the way, anybody who only shows honest flow figures is not being honest with you with the amount of information that could have been given. How many times have we seen that flow figures are only half the story? Do you know why Warren Johnson wasn't big on flow figures? Because, and I suspect this and I'm ready to stand corrected, Warren, correct me if necessary. He was only looking at flow figures. We look at a much wider range of stuff. That's why we've got all those other things there. Just as a last point here, 
I sent Eric one of our flow test programs. I don't know what they're valued at, 125, 175, can't remember. Doesn't matter. We sent him one free to help him. He didn't want to use it. I wonder why. It's very accurate. And if we're talking about honest flow figures, you need to compare Eric's flow figures that he had on his flow test for this LS3 head and our flow figures. That's episode 136. I'll put the link on here and I'll also have it down in the title. Thank you for watching. That brings us to the end of this video. Look out for the next part in this. It will take a while, but I'll have it ready. And I will absolutely mince this down to basic facts.